Let's look here with C's Look Stitch. Today is Sunday, March 13th, 2022. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. I'm so glad that you're here spending part of your day or your evening with me. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I uh, am filming this on a Sunday because yesterday um, I was busy. I was busy. <laughs> I didn't tell you guys this ahead of time. I started a part-time job at Acorns and Threads, uh, and yesterday was my first day, and so that's why I couldn't film. Um, I'm only working there one day a month, uh, but it's so much fun. I love it. Janine, the store owner, and everyone who works there is really, really wonderful and welcoming, and I think I'm going to learn a whole bunch, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, so that'll be really fun. So that's what I did, where I was yesterday, and probably about once a month then I will um, have to film on Sundays instead of on Saturdays. I'm a little tired today, I admit. Um, we were, you know, kind of running around helping customers, but it was so much fun. And I really, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a dream job. My, my regular full-time job is also a dream job, so I'm very, very lucky to have two dream jobs going here at the moment. So that's where I was yesterday. So stop in sometime and hopefully I will run into you. So that's where I was yesterday. Thank you all so much for your comments. Oh my gosh, your comments about, so last week I told you about how I accidentally washed my hair with body wash instead of shampoo and I actually like Oh, I kind of like how my hair looks. So many of you shared hilarious stories about things like that that you have done. Um, one person said she just tried shaving her legs and left the cap on the razor on, and so it got her nowhere. Uh, Gladys, Gladys said she once washed her hair on accident with dog shampoo. <laughs> Uh, you, your stories just really cracked me up and made me feel a lot better. So thank you for sharing your stories and for the really, the laughs and everything and uh, made me feel a little less alone in that. So I appreciate that. Um, and then one other question I had was from Karen who asked um, about the Valdani threads. And this is a really good question that I don't think has been asked before. I know a lot of people, I'm, I'm looking over here at my Valdani threads that I pulled out to show you. Now, I, we've talked about a couple different times on here about how to use the Valdani threads. Um, but Karen asked, so she's working on Spring Quakers and she said, did you run out of any, um, you know, when you buy the, the kits, they come kitted together. Did you run out of any? How frugal do you have to be? Now in the chart, Karen Kluba tells you um, there might be one or two each of these charts of the seasonal um, Quakers, she tells you, hey, you might run low on this one, so be very careful. So look inside the front cover. It should be in there somewhere. For me, I'm not a super duper frugal person with my threads. I, I'll end it when it starts being uncomfortable for me, right? So I'm not going to be playing thread chicken or anything like that. I mean, obviously, I try to take great care and how much I'm using and that type of thing. But um, if it's starting to get really uncomfortable or cutting it too close for the most part. Now, if I only have like one or two stitches and I don't want to start a new thread, I'll try to eke it out. But for the most part, I go until it feels comfortable or uncomfortable when it starts feeling like it's getting a little too short and then I'll cut it. So I did run out completely of two threads on Spring Quakers. It also depends on if you're going to be frogging and how much you frog. So... The one, one that I ran out of was H209, so I had to buy a new one of this. So you can see, like, this is almost full. So I almost had enough. Um, I can't remember which one, because I left my chart upstairs, but I can't remember which one she said that you might run out of. The other one, I think this is the other one I had to buy, was 0575, I think, because this one's pretty, I think this one is used a lot, and you could tell my second skein is used up quite a bit more than the other one I bought that I just had to use a little bit of. So be if you're super frugal with H209, you probably don't have to buy another one. Um, and you can see, I brought all these down. I, I know this is kind of, you can see the other ones that I, these are all my leftovers from spring Quakers. So you can see this is 078. I had plenty left of all the other ones, right? 0514, plenty left. 
This is oh five seven five. This I, I'm pretty sure that's one that I had to buy an extra one of. H two o four, plenty left. And these um I think I might here's P one plenty. Um, I'm thinking about using these or some of these for funky flowers. Um, H two o five, because funky flowers, uh, which is by the bay needle art. Um, P six. Because that one, I mean, it's a great way to finish up some of your stash. This is JP8. So this one, I don't think, I didn't buy another one, but it was getting pretty low. But there's still enough left. Oh, 0120. Um, can you see that? Uh, so I think I'm going to use up some of these for funky flowers because I think that'll be really pretty. And, you know, you can just kind of change threads and flowers and it's okay because they're flowers they're in nature this is p8 sorry my eyes couldn't read the little label and then this one is p10 so karen i hope that helps um where i bought the individual balls of valdani is from a website called Haiti and Della and so they will sell you the individual balls and you know I think they're like maybe four three or four dollars a piece um I'll link them down below um so that if you do run out or I just winked at you I think I'm not sure why <laughs> so I just saw that in the camera sometimes my eye will just randomly wink at you all so there you go hope you all feel special <laughs> Um, I will link it down below, uh, Haiti and Della. And so if you do end up feeling like you're cutting it a little close and you need an extra ball of Del of Valdani, um, you can get them from Haiti and Della. That's what I did. And, um, they're fairly reasonably priced. And for me, it's worth it to just buy an extra ball and have some leftovers, um, that I know I can use for another piece then feeling really stressed out about, oh goodness, where am I going to get, you know, where am I going to get this? Uh, how am I going to do this? So that, I hope, Karen, I hope that helps. Let me know if you have other questions about Spring Quakers and Valdani threads. Um, but yeah, those are all my leftovers. So I have plenty left over and I think they'll go great with the funky flowers and kind of use up some of my leftovers, some of my variegated. I think it's going to be really great. I haven't thought out funky flowers yet. Um, just as a reminder, Jan and I, Jan Hicks and I are starting that on May 1 for May Day. Um, and uh, you can get the charts, either PDF or the physical charts on uh, By the Bay Etsy shop. And if you buy at least three, so there's 24. You don't have to buy all 24. If you buy at least three, she will send you various layouts by email that just give you an idea of how you want to do this as a layout if you want to stitch them all on the same piece. So those were all the questions that I had for this week. So let's get into whips. So first up, I worked on warm welcome. And this was for so for the magazine monthly challenge. Um, the cross the theme for this month is animals, which we saw last week was the Carolyn and her cats piece, which I'll show that to you again um, at, later on. Um, and the cross stick is furry friends, uh, and you can pick one word or the other or do them both. I'm just doing furry. And so for the F and furry for full coverage, I'm working on warm welcome. This is designed by Joanne Aston. This is what it will look like. This is a March start last year for my birthday month because it has flowers and a cat and I love that. Um, and so I'm up here in this corner and I had to frog a bunch and restitch it. So it probably looks like I haven't made much progress. I'm just stitching this on a 28 count white even weave. And there's cat hair all over it, of course. Here is where I'm at. Let me see if I can get this closer up for you. So I have figured out where I went wrong. I think I told you that last week maybe. And so I think this week I was just able to stitch. So I'm filling back in over here. This met up. So last week I didn't have the sky meeting up with the flowers yet. It all met up. Everything is good. So I'm just now I'm able to kind of just work 
forward, move forward on this, uh, which is great. And I think I know last week I was talking about there's a lot of backstitching in the flowers to help make them stand out. And I was like, well, maybe I'll do it at the end. I think, though, once there are some stitches missing in here that I need to fill in. But once I get the stitches in, I do think I'm going to backstitch as I go because there'll be a lot of backstitching to make those flowers stand out and I you know I'm not gonna want to do it later let's be honest so this is where we're at so I think I'm about where I was before I started frogging um so you know but we figured out our mistake and we are moving forward on that so that was the f in furry and f is for full coverage so this will come out a couple more times this year, two or three more times, I can't remember. Uh, but so that will feel good to make some actual progress on it instead of just frogging and um, restitching things. Next up, I worked on Summer Quakers. Uh, this is another Rosewood Manor. This is what it will look like. I love the colors in this so much. It's um, stitched on 28 count. Picture this plus truffle. So it's like a light pink. And I can't remember where I was last time because I know I worked on it quite a bit last month too. But I finished up. Oh, sorry. My, my cue snap was sitting. I don't know if you heard that or not. Um, let me move my keyboard out of the way. Um, my, my Q snap was sitting on my keyboard and it must have pushed a button. So I'm not sure what you heard, but, um, I finished up this flower here, um, with all these leaves, these little floating flowers. So I'm almost done with page three. I have to do this motif and this motif. So these two on the edge here, and then we'll be able to go over to page four. Now there's an alphabet down here. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that. I might leave that off. I think it's kind of random. And none of the others have alphabets, so I might just finish it there and call it good. And then it's just the flowers. So here are the colors. You have that DMC 310 in there. But those pinks are just so, so pretty. And what I do with the Valdani's, um, so you can see I have these in Floss Away bags. Um, they have these cute little cardboard um, insets with the numbers on them. But as you use up the floss, the cardboard... Um, will come off. It's just set in there. Um, and so when it starts feeling like the cardboard piece is going to come off, I put them in floss away bags and I just tape the cardboard number to them. Um, you can use sandwich Ziploc bags, whatever works for you. Um, and I just use scotch tape on the front and then just put them in there. Now, I'm guessing I'm going to run out of this one because look how much I've already used and I'm not even quite a third of the way done yet. So um, that one is going pretty fast. And again, she will tell you in here, let's see, she says you'll use up. Yeah, so here she says you will use almost all of the following. And she will tell you the two names. And the one I'm almost done with isn't on here. Um... So, you know, just be aware of that. And those two you all maybe want to be a little more frugal with um, or just plan on buying an extra, extra ball of. So that's Spring Quakers. Now, Spring Quakers, um, this month I'm doing designer on, focus on a designer. And did I show you? I didn't actually show you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Janine broke me yesterday at Acorns, I think. <laughs> Here's where I got to. Uh, so I got this whole flower done. I got these little floating flowers. They're so cute. So down here, move this. So we'll have two more motifs here. And then we'll be able to move the page or move the cue snap. Um, and then we'll start on page four, which is on the left-hand side. So we'll move down a row. Uh, there's only nine pages, but pages three, six, and nine are not full pages. So that is where we're at. I am loving this. And I think maybe next week I'll be able to take this off the cue snaps and kind of show you a little bit better where I'm at. Um, but I am using Summer Quakers is for focus on a designer through the Garon group. 
Uh, our focus, our designer this month is Karen Kuba of Rosewood Manor. Uh, so I'm doing that. And then it's also my whip go call for this month as well. So it's county. So we're going to be stitching on it a lot this week, this month, I guess I should say, but that's okay because it is focus on a designer and I haven't been great with the focus on a designers. Next up, I did some work on autumn Quakers, another Quaker. So I think somebody was teasing me. I think last week I said something about being Quakerlicious, a Quakerlicious week. And I stand by that. <laughs> so here is what it will look like. This is Autumn Quakers. My goal on this piece is to finish it by the end of the year. So I work on it 12 hours every month. Um, I'll be working on it a couple more times this week. So I think I'm done. I think I'm done with page three. So I think I'm ready to move on to page four. Yeah. Uh, so I finished this motif. So everything on that page I think is done. And then we'll be able to move down here and start working down here. And this is on the called for 28 count by picture this plus doubloon. And this is what it looks like so far. Love, love the colors. That blank spot right here is where the year goes. I'm leaving that off for now just in case life happens but hopefully it will say 2022 and you can see I worked this week I had I just worked over in here and finished everything up over here and then next we will be working on bringing this um, this motif down because it goes down quite far and then working our way in on page four. So it's like, I think it's so pretty. I love the colors in this, even though I'm more in like a spring summer colors now because it's March. Um, but these, these colors are so rich and they're so, so pretty. So that's been fun to work on as well. And that's just, that just is counting for my regular, well, uh, focus on designer, but also just my regular, um, regular monthly rotation. The wind is howling outside. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is a very windy day. All right. The next piece I worked on is Cat Alphabet. This is one of my haids. This is artwork by Irina Garmashova. This is what it will look like. I am way up here in the corner. I am still in this yellow spot right up here in the upper left corner. I am working my way over. I think my next, when this, my goal on this is just bringing it out once a month and working on it three hours. Um, I think the next time I pull it out, I'm going to work, maybe start working on the C so that we can actually see something. Um, I am stitching this on a gigantic piece of 18 count Ada. And here is where I got to. I have my, oops, my needle minders from EJ sent them to me. If I fits, I sits, cat, and I heart black cats. Love those. I couldn't decide which one I wanted, so I just put them both on here. Okay, so this is where we're at, and I'm sorry, I'm so bad with taking before pictures, but I worked a lot down in here. I got, I did remember to write down my stitches, 360 stitches in, in three hours. A lot of that was because there was a lot, it wasn't, I didn't do a lot of heavy confetti. A lot of it was this little yellow color that you see that I did. So, and then you can see it, we kind of have some sorry, sprinkles down here of the yellow. And then you can see really clearly now this outline of the C right there. Um, so what I might start doing is like start working this way. Um, so easy to keep going down. Um, but I think working on that C and C, starting to see some progress on it will be really fun. So that's where we're at. I really love working on this and um, I, I really do. I um, don't want to put it away and I want to figure out a way to work on it more than just one day a month. Um, right this year, I don't think is the year for me to do that. 
but it's been lovely to work on. And in a little bit, I will talk a little bit more about... Well, hold on. Let me go grab something. Okay. And I'll be Sorry right. about that. I wanted to grab my tablet that I use because I do use Pattern Keeper for my Hades. Um, <clears throat> I got... Whoops, this is a play down. I got this one. I know this doesn't look like anything. It is this brand, High Joy. Um, I literally only use it for Pattern Keeper. I have two Hades on it right now. It seems to work fine. Um, and so I've had this for, I don't know, a little while. And so that works. And then this is kind of haul, but kind of hate haul. I bought one of these. It's just like a, it's a stand. I'll put, I'll link both the tablet and the stand in my Amazon, Amazon shop, which is linked down below. This is called a pillow pad. I just got it off of Amazon. It's like 20 bucks. And I needed something to set my tablet in because a lot of times I was just holding it in my lap and it would like mess up. I would accidentally touch buttons or whatnot. So I have this. I actually, so you can do it this direction or you can do it this direction and there's like a little pocket, which actually makes it stand a little upright a little bit more. And this is the side I like to use. The other nice thing is that there is a pocket on the side. So if you wanted to stick your scissors or a pen or pencil or a stylus in there, you could do that as well. They have other colors. Um, and it is, you know, it comes, it's one of those that comes kind of squished down. Um, and you have to let it expand a little bit um, when you take it out of the package. It says on the package a few minutes. I would say give like 30 minutes at least to let it expand. And mine is a bit wrinkly, you know, but I don't really care about that because it's just a pillow for um, my tablet. So I don't really care that it's super wrinkly. Um, it's that like memory foam stuff inside. Um, I really like it. It's really comfortable. You could sit it on your lap. I sit it on the coffee table or the end table beside me and it works really nicely. It's really lightweight. Uh, so yeah, so I like it. It worked really well. I really like the tablet. Like I said, I literally only use it for, um, pattern keeper. Um, the only thing is, so when I do a three hour stitching session, it brings the power down to about 50%. So I do have to kind of be aware of that and, you know, just be on top of charging it. But other than that, I do really like it. So if you are looking for a tablet to use for Pattern Keeper, and this tablet, um, I was able to just download Pattern Keeper. I did not have to do <clears throat> the workaround for downloading the, you know, you download Google Drive. And then, so like Fire Tablets, I think you have to do the workaround for, to download Pattern Keeper. This tablet, I did not have to. I could just download the app like regular. So that's a little bit haul, a little bit talking about hate. So that's what I worked on this week. And I have just a little bit of haul. It's not even really haul. Um, it was very strange. Let me tell you how strange it was to spend all day at Acorns and Threads yesterday and come home with nothing. Um, but I'll be going back again and, and um, getting some haul. So don't worry about that. So I got my World of Cross Stitching magazine in. This is Issue 317, again, they stopped printing the month on it. It's a spring one, so it's probably March, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I'm going to guess it's March. So we'll do a flip through of that a little bit later. And then I got some Stitchy Kindness in the mail. I got, so Deb, uh won one of my giveaways and so she sent me this beautiful card this is by Michelle Dettering Dettering Arts Dettering um my mother's maiden name is Dettering with a d and I think it used to back in the day used to be sold with a t I'm not sure but beautiful beautiful card with a lovely lovely note inside so thank you so much Deb I appreciate your lovely words um and this super fun envelope, I mean, how could you not be excited to rip into that? Um, and then she also sent me these really darling emery boards, which I actually needed one the other day. So this is going to be perfect for my stitchy kit. This one says, stay fabulous. So this will be really handy. 
and then this really cute notepad. Look at that llama. Oh my gosh, it's darling. It has a magnet so I could hang it up. Um, super cute. Thank you so much, Deb. And she also did send some cash to help with um, shipping out uh, giveaways. So Deb, I so appreciate that. That made my day. It was completely unexpected. So thank you so much for that. That's all my haul this week, you guys. Can you believe it? Um, okay, so plans coming up. We will be working this week on more summer Quakers, which you have uh, just seen. We'll be working more on autumn Quakers, which you also just saw. We will be working on Cardinal Cottage. This is my other hade that comes out once a month. Um, and it looks like this artwork is by Donna Gelsinger and it will look like this and I'm way up in here and also stitching this on 18 cow Ada. Um, <laughs> I went to go cut down a lot of fabric and, um, fray check the edges. And so I was measuring this one and Unfortunately, this one is about the right size. I was like, oh no, it's way bigger than it needs to be and I need to cut it down. No, it's about the right size. I mean, it might be a few inches bigger, but nothing worth like cutting down. So this is where I'm at right now. Not too far on this one, um, you know, and it kind of doesn't look like much because we're up in the trees and the shadows. So, uh, but it'll be good to continue working on this one. Again, we do about three hours a month on that. So we'll be doing that this week. And then I'll be starting with Sarah of Stitching Mommy. I put it, I changed the bag. Then I have it now in this like Easter spring bag because we will be stitching on spring montage. This is artwork is by Janet Stever, and I got this chart off of Pain Free Crafts. It's P-A-I-N-E. I have um, all four seasons, so I'm going to start, I guess I'm going to start each one on the first day of the season this year. But um, So I can start this. And I think I have all my floss. I do need to, I mean, it's just like this, so I need to get it on um, thread keeps and all that. And I'm just going to be stitching it. It is full coverage, but I'm going to be stitching it on a Lugana. Um, uh, th uh, 32 count Lugana. So it's just a white Lugana. So I'm excited to start on that. And I'll be working on that a couple days this week. Um, and I will also be using Pattern Keeper for that because it is a full coverage. So that should be fun. And then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is over in the Magazine Monthly Challenge group, we are doing, for our pop-up challenge this month, we are doing something called Spring Into Action. So we are going to, we are asking you to pick your project, a whip, any whip that is closest to a finish. Okay, I'm good. I have a hair out of place. Can't have that. Um... Whip those closest to a finish. Now, um, Karen, a different Karen, said, well, I'm only working on a hade right now, and I'm on page four out of 100. It's like, well, that's still your whip closest to a finish, right? Um, so it doesn't have to be something that you necessarily finish. It's just whatever whip you're working on that's closest to a finish, uh, do five hours or 500 stitches on it, and if you complete that project before those, those five hours or 500 stitches are done, then pull out your next closest one to a um, finish and, and work on that one. Now, this will be March 21st through March 27th uh, over in our Magazine Monthly Challenge group. And um, you go join that group. Make sure you answer the questions. Uh, they're just, we don't necessarily care what the answers are as long as it looks like you know a little bit like you're familiar with some of them <laughs> as long as it seems like you're not a bot um, we have had an increase of uh, seemingly bots uh, requesting to join um, so we do read your answers and 
you know, you can tell the difference between somebody who says, oh, I'm just new to cross stitch versus somebody who's just a bot who's just randomly answering the questions. So, you know, uh, just answer the question so we know you're a real human, <laughs> please. And then you go under events, and then you can say that you're going to our event. Again, It's you have the whole week from Monday, March 21st through, I think it's the 27th, whatever that Sunday is, to get your five hours or your 500 stitches in. And I am going to, my piece I'm going to work on is Carolyn and Her Cats by Lynette Peters. Isn't this darling? Um, because all I have left to do is this heart border that goes all around the outside and then it will be done. And so, and my goal on this for this year is to finish it. And I think it'd be really cute in a little frame on my desk, maybe at work. Um, so I can look at it and think about my boys throughout the day. So that's what I'm going to work on. I know that's still a couple weeks away, but that is something that I am going to work on. But I wanted to let you know today in case you wanted to join us over in the Magazine Monthly Challenge for that challenge, for that pop-up challenge, it is called Spring Into Action. So we're going to get some progress on our whips. Maybe some people will get some finishes, which would be great. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today. So I should be back on Saturday next week. And, oh, yeah, I'm doing some. So my birthday is coming up in about 10 days or so. And I have some birthday celebration stuff on Saturday. But I will try to film on Saturday. If not, I will be there definitely on Sunday. And I will see you then. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. <music>